All right, hello everyone. We are the team from Georgia Tech's Energy Club. Uh, we wanna start by thanking the competition organizers for this opportunity to learn about solar development in a practical context, as well as the judges for taking their time to evaluate the hard work that we've put in this past year. All right, so let's just take a quick look at our team. So here you can see me and everyone else with their cameras working. Um, so we have students from a diverse range of engineering disciplines who were able to bring different perspectives to the project. Um, the last two images are our advisors, Dr. Molzan, who gave us some feedback on our presentation, and Matt Warner, who assisted us with the conceptual design optimization. All right, so system goals. So let's take a look at what we considered uh, when we were designing our system. Okay, oh, okay, there's a missing slide. Okay, um, okay, well, I will just talk about the district goals then. Um, so uh, our project aligns with several of the objectives identified in OSU's framework in their uh, 2.0 master plan. Um, that includes promoting innovation and partnerships with on-campus and off-campus organizations. Um, a solar project of this scale would be able to um, involve uh, organizations like Green Energy Ohio and, of course, on-campus organizations. Our project would synergize with the university's goals to renovate many of their buildings in the district in the upcoming years, as it would be easier to install panels um, during and after renovation. Um, and in terms of resource stewardship and sustainability, OSU wants to advance uh, university sustainability goals and reduce energy use and their carbon footprint. Furthermore, the Ohio State Climate Action Plan where they outline um, where they outline their objectives. They say they could uh, develop 10 megawatts of solar by 2030. Uh, with our system, they would be able to generate 4.1 of those 10 megawatts. Moreover, our system will contribute to their goal of reducing emissions by 55%. Okay, so now Alyssa will take over and talk about our proposed system. Okay, so we designed a total of 13 rooftops and we chose the buildings based on their size, lack of obstructions, and the lack of excessive shading. Um, we decided to design a system with maximum power output, so we used a small tilt angle and minimal spacing so we could fit as many panels as possible on each building. This was because we're designing on the medical campus, so energy security is extremely important to these buildings. As Taid will explain later, we ran calculations on each individual building to customize the spacing to each roof, and then when adding the panels to the buildings, we paid attention to the irradiance and possible obstructions and removed any panels that were too shaded. And then for the carports, we designed a total of three. Um, we used the same process for choosing the tilt angles as we did for the, for the rooftops, um, but this time we placed the panels over the parking spots so they could shade the cars underneath them. We set the panels at 10 feet high so that they could accommodate the vehicles and then one interesting element to this plan is that the 9th Avenue East parking garage has EV charging stations. So we can further contribute to sustainability efforts by providing renewable energy for these electric cars. In our design, we also have an agrivoltaic setup on the Waterman Agricultural Complex. This is where livestock can graze in the same place as our solar panels. We chose four different areas for the panels, which will minimize costs for clearing the land because in these four areas on the map, there are fewer trees. We will connect these arrays in a series with wiring underground to get to the distribution connection site, the east. We increase the spacing between the rows of panels so that the grass intakes more light. And depending on the type of animal, we would change the panel height. A standard panel height for cattle is about 10 feet in other grazing systems, but the complex has Jersey cattle, which are relatively short. So we have ours at eight feet, whereas rabbits and sheep would have the normal height for any standard solar farm. This is very much a new area of interest in renewable energy in which, Ohio, in which Ohio State can do extensive research. In particular, the Ohio Agricultural R&D Center at Ohio State could find the research in this area most useful. So one of the major benefits of this system is its carbon offset. Currently only 3% of 
um, the state of Ohio energies comes from renewables and the grid is actually ranked fourth highest for CO2 intensity. So the introduction of more solar in Ohio actually has a relatively greater environmental impact uh, than it would in a state with that is less coal dependent. Uh, the installation of this system would be paving the road for more solar to be installed around the state of Ohio, uh, giving the university the ability to act as a leader in renewable energy in the state. Uh, the system also plays into the district's goals of extending their on-campus photovoltaics and giving back to the community through um, providing EV charging stations and expanding their existing EV infrastructure. It also could involve active student groups such as Engineers for a Sustainable World, as well as facilitate general solar education and outreach. Part of our design challenge was to include a battery that could sustain three of Ohio State's hospitals with 40% of their peak load in the case of an outage. We found the average time for both local distribution outages and major transmission events. And to get an average outage time of a little over four and a, a little over four hours, we multiplied those two values together and accounted for load variance on top of this to get a total of about 9.3 megawatt hours. This being such a large number, we felt the only reasonable option was to go for very large energy storage options. Here, a Tesla Megapack is more economical than a series of smaller battery systems and is likely in the next year to be comprised of lithium iron phosphate cells, which we determined were an ideal battery type for our application and for Ohio State's mission. But in our final design, we explicitly chose not to use this battery system on the campus because of its excessive cost as compared to backup power generators, which would provide the same resilience. So now looking at the financial performance, our project is being financed through a PPA, which is a cheaper option to buying the system outright. All the systems achieve an IRR of 6.1%, which is standard and competitive for solar projects of this size. Due to the already extremely low rate Ohio pays for electricity, the MPV is negative. The average PPA prices are higher than Ohio State's current rate, but the university expected this price increase. Also, these costs are offset by the benefits of our system. And because we provide individual analysis for each system, this gives Ohio State flexibility if they have limits to their maximum PPA price. And now we will go more in depth on the process we used to arrive at this design. So the first thing that we had to consider um, in designing our system is whether there were any constraints imposed by the distribution network. Um, so firstly, we assume that uh, since Ohio State has their own substation, uh, it would have high voltage rated equipment and over voltage was, was not much of a threat. Uh, then later when we were provided these um, heat maps, we were able to conclude that there was suitable capacity for more solar than would uh, reasonably be possible to install. So moving forward from this, we did not really have to consider um, any sort of size limitations uh, overloading the system. The main parameters for our equipment selection were efficiency and cost. So we ended up choosing the solar panels from Canadian Solar because they had a combination of high performance at about 98% efficiency and a competitive price. For the inverters, there were quite a range of different sizes available on Aurora. So we focused on first choosing um, the inverters that were suitable to the size of our system. And then we looked for um, the inverters with the, with the best prices for both the inverter and the microinverter. Another point to mention with the inverters was that they, we needed them to have a 240 volt out, output because this is the same voltage provided by the transformers serving the loads. And our, the inverter that we chose falls within this range. The most innovative part of our design was our optimization of the tilt and spacing. We wanted to know how we could maximize power while minimizing power loss due to panel shading each other. As you can see in these images, increasing tilt also increases shading loss. Spacing them out does decrease shading loss, but also reduces the number of panels we can fit in an area. In the progress deliverable design, we use the heuristic of tilting the panels to the latitude of its location, leading to panel shading panels behind itself. 
For the final design, shading loss was considered in determining the tilt and spacing of the panels. To account for the shading loss in the panel design, a few parameters had to be obtained via experimenting in Aurora Solar. The first of the parameters that we were that were experimentally acquired was the tilt that would produce the maximum power. By incrementing the tilt of a single panel, we measured we measured which tilt angle produced the maximum power with no shading. Next, we wanted to determine the impact the panel tilt had on the amount of power lost from the shading. Uh, to set up this experiment, a large flat area was determined in the OSU area, and a large number of panels, around 5,000, were placed in it with no spacing between them. Using this setup, we were able to fit parameters to the shading loss equation we created here. Now we were ready to analyze the impact of both the panel spacing between the rows and tilt on the, on the shading loss. The addition of spacing as a variable resulted in the additional parameters to the tilt shading loss formula shown here. The design was determined to be optimized by maximizing output energy since no energy capacity limit had been given in the guidelines. Now that all the parameters were optimized to fit our experimental OSU data, optimal tilt and row spacing for maximum energy can be determined for the OSU buildings using this formula. As a result, we found that all the buildings followed a general design pattern. For maximum energy production, we use a very slight tilt and space the panels close together. For our financial analysis methodology, we had a target RRR of 6.1%, which is standard for solar projects of this size. We determined the blended rate using energy tool base. We considered solar incentives, including ITC, makers, and RECs. Using these considerations, we modeled the utility savings and energy tool base and inputted these values into a modified version of the provided financial Excel model and adjusted the debt equity ratio to the NREL benchmark value of 35%. This process outputted the PPA price and 20 year MPV for each building. And the graph below shows that the payback period is just under 11 years. All right, so earlier we mentioned that we opted not to uh, recommend a battery for this system. And so let's see why exactly we decided that. So primarily we use REOP Lite to um, do our battery analysis. And we were able to use it to find the minimum battery size uh, to survive an outage. Um, and it compare the MPV of that system to the MPV of a generator. Um, with the PV, uh, with the PV array already designed, we were able to use that as an input, as well as um, the battery cost, the load profiles provided, um, the rate schedule, and the uh, federal ITC, which uh, batteries would be eligible for if they are charged 100% from uh, the solar array. Um, and so we were able to hit that with an outage at peak load and then kind of compare the systems. And so there's actually a typo on the side. Those should be negative net present values. So the, uh, the battery is actually much, much more costly, uh, $250,000 more costly than um, just a traditional uh, system. Now, one of the, the reasons behind this is that there really were, there's no time of use charges for their, their rate. So there was no option to do load shifting to off peak hours. Um, and we also did analysis on how much savings could be uh, provided by the peak shaving. And uh, there were some savings to be made there, but they really weren't um, enough to uh, justify a large battery. And then finally, the emissions that would be offset by switching from a generator to a battery are pretty negligible because outages are not very common. So let's uh, just wrap up and take one more look at the benefits of the system. So first of all, the system is very sizable with uh, 4,700 megawatt hours of yearly production. Um, the system is, has a competitive IRR and will be able to easily find an investor. And the 
uh, it does not include a cost seek battery system. It will uh, help the district achieve their greenhouse gas emission reductions and also achieve their other goals of education and leadership. 